Hello and welcome to live coverage of the NFHS Network powered by SoCal Productions. I'm Bo Furtick alongside my partner Thomas Conroy as we bring you playoff action here in the San Diego section. We are here at St. Augustine High School, the home of the Western League champions as the Saints take on Western League foe, the Coronado Islanders. The three seed versus the six seed. These two teams have faced each other twice this season with uh, the Saints beating Coronado both times. What do you expect this time around, Thomas? Well, I expect a, another tight battle. Uh, you know, from St. Augustine's per perspective, you hate playing a team a third time. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, but this is the playoffs. It's, it's a different type of uh, an animal. And I think Coach Johnson said it perfectly to us during, during the pregame is continuing what, what, what you have done all season long. And you don't have to worry about what you did against Coronado. It's basically what, you, what you've done all season and, more importantly, in league play. And uh, they just have to be aggressive. On Coronado's side, I think they're, you know, I think they're, they're very happy that one, one of their key players has returned from injury, uh, uh, Ricardo Mendoza, the senior. So uh, on that, in their perspective, uh, you know, he, coaching staff said he looked very well uh, playing in, in the last few games of the regular season. They hope that that can now continue here in the playoffs, and you know, they kind of try to ride him a little bit, Bo. I mean, that's basically... What you, what you want to do if he's one of your key goal scorers and he's been out with an injury, uh, you know, you're very fortunate to get him back. And obviously now you got to see if he has the stamina to kind of play at this high level. That will be really the question for me today. We've talked multiple times th throughout the season mm -hmm. that this is the best league by far yes. in soccer terms. All five teams made the open division. Mm -hmm. talk, talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah, I mean, th this is, you know, it was, it's funny, uh, this is my first year covering soccer once again here in the San Diego section, and uh, you, you, I knew the, the quality was good from, from covering it in, in years back, but you really didn't know how good it was once, right. it, once you get you kind of get re-situated re, 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 re in, in the scene. And, uh, you know, this, this division is tough. I mean, we've been all over this, uh, this, this the city. County. Yeah, all over the county watching St. Augustine, and, and every game has been tight. Uh, could, you know, could turn on a moment's known it. It seems like you, you know, even if you get the the, the 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 momentum early in the contest, it could turn quickly, right? And it's hard to get it back. So they're very very well contested, and uh, you know, th that's what I think. Why both of these teams are, are you know, even though Coronado's a six seed, they could come here and here easily today and, and win this game, and and I, and I think that that just kind of keeps you right on top of your your own game to make sure that that you you know, you don't have any laps in your play. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we, we talked about it off the air, and we'll probably talk about it during the contest, the, the, the seeding. All these teams in, in, the, in the top four are, are amazing teams, and there's a few we haven't seen, but just by reputation, talking to coaches, it's, it's going to be fun to kind of keep track of this playoffs. The winner of this game will play the winner of Canyon Crest and Point Loma. Canyon Crest, the two seed. Point Loma, the seven. The other two teams in the Western Division, Cathedral Catholic, Scripps Ranch, those are the four or five seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, Torrey Pines w was the overall one seed, and LCC got the eight seed. So the winner of this, once again, will play the two seven seed, Canyon Crest and Point Loma. We'll go into the starting lineup for the San Augustine Saints. Up front, Michael Pianconi, Sahi Curry, Rueda, who had a hat trick in the last time they played Coronado. In the middle, David Rizalowski, the freshman Santiago Gallego gets the playoff start, along with Jose Diaz Caballos and Jacob Fuson on the right side. And the back four from left to right, Henry DePaulo, Isaac Tamer, Aiden Johnson, the two center backs, and Antonio Padilla on the right. And in front of the net, uh, just a guy that has done it all year, Nate Valley, has earned his stripes this season. Uh, any surprises or anyone you, you'd like to talk about in that starting lineup for the Saints? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the development of, of Santiago Gallego, I, I think he's done an excellent job. When, uh, when we did our first broadcast the first week in January, I remember uh, I was down at Coronado and talking to the coaching staff that very first game that we broadcast. Uh, you know, he was like, well, it's, he's a freshman. Let's see what he does. We really think that, that he deserves a spot here on the varsity level. And now he, he, he becomes, you know, it, it becomes the evolution of, of a freshman to a spot, smart starter to a, to a key performer coming off the bench, giving other players rest to now a starter. So hats off to him that that's developing over that period of time. We didn't get the starting lineup from the coach. He didn't want to give us that information. He felt it was a little too much. So we will be learning as this game goes along. But the captains 
for Coronado, Nick Woods, Nathan Muddy, and Anthony Dick for the Islanders. Yeah, just from the, 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 the past two games that we broadcast, uh, be careful for, for Nicholas Woods, the senior. They're a very senior-laden team, and, and they know what they need to do. And let's see how they perform here in Championship Tuesday. That's a long chip inside the attacking <laughs> zone. Henry DiApollo comes up with it and clears it out. Tries to find Saheed Curry Rueda. He had the hat trick in that second meeting against the Islanders. This is Rizalowski loses the ball near midfield. Islanders control. Tried to chip it down the far sideline. Intercepted by Johnston. The Saints will switch fields. Nice pass to Fuzan. Him and Padilla work really well on the right side. Drops it back to Padilla. Finds Pianconi. A little too early on the pass to Rizalowski. Yeah, great read there by Calvin Cock. Sends it out to the far side. You could expect both of these teams to battle it out throughout this game. Nick Woods gets the advantage call. I think they would have liked to have that ball in that area. That would have been a dangerous spot for a free kick nonetheless. A strike from outside the box rolls to Nate Valley. That was off the foot of Nathan Muddy. And we talked about it all season long of Valley. Just a great, just great uh, adept at, at cutting down the angles on shots and uh, really active in the net. And, and he has to be. He's not the ideal si uh, height for, for a goaltender, but he does a tremendous job with just his agility. Athleticism and anticipation. Yeah. Well, definitely two of his key characteristics in front of the net, which has allowed him to be um, really, really good this year. Coming up on two minutes into this game, we have a free kick opportunity in the attacking half for the Islanders. Yeah, but the first time these two teams met was uh, you on, caught that game. on January 8th at Coronado. Coronado had a 2-0 uh, lead on uh, Saints. This ball trickles near the top of the 18. Can the Saints clear it out? Having difficulties, Coronado moving the ball well and kicked out from the end line. Antonio Padilla doesn't allow the ball to get to the net. Yeah, this defense uh, to me is the best part of the Saints team. Uh, they really play well. The, the the strikers not allowing them to get any type of advantage on the keeper. As we see a setup here, one player inside the six. Now we see another Islander coming over. I don't know if they're going to switch out. Who's going to? They might play the short ball. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're they're trying to get a defender away from the goal. They'll play the short ball. A good defense by Saheed Curry Rueda tries to clear it out. Knocks off of El Assad, and it will go towards the Saints. So a wasted opportunity here early for the Islanders. Yeah, you get the feeling Coronado's coaching staff doesn't really like the way Saeed plays. A little physical. I don't think it's their cup of tea, but it, it, it works. And uh, he does, I believe he does kind of walk on that tightrope of the line. But you know what? I, I don't think he, he goes over it too often. And, uh, you know, it's okay to be physical. It's his style of play. Yeah, and really it's both strikers up front. Michael mm -hmm. Coney, you can say that for <laughs> as well. Just a guy that gets in the trenches and, and digs for the ball. Nice ball by Padilla, but a little too much pace on it. He had Fusan on the run near side. Just Fusan just one step too late, unable to get there in time, and it will go to the Coronado Islanders in their defensive third. <laughs> You know, I just laugh because you, you don't think when you look at Michael Piaconi as the type of player that would be physical, but you're right. He does. He he, he kind of works his body and, and kind of pushes off people to get to create his own space in certain areas on the on the pitch. Headed twice by the Saints, controlled by the Saints here near side. Fuson cuts it inside, beats one defender, can't get past the other. That one trickles under the feet of El Assad, and it'll go back to Valley. Tamer with the ball. Plays it to Rizalowski. He controls with his chest. The chip. And once again, a little too much pace brought in by Jack Irvin. The long goal kick. Headed out by Tamer to DePaulo. Back to Tamer, far side. 
Nice ball to Diaz Caballos, and that one will be off the Islanders once again. Five minutes into this first half, the Open Division playoff in the San Diego section. And you know it's a big game when they when they put the scoreboard clock on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time we've seen that all season. <laughs> and we usually have to go true. by sundial here where we're <laughs> broadcasting from, but today we get the clock. We appreciate that. Once again, it's the three seed St. Augustine Saints versus the six seed Coronado Islanders. These two teams did face off against one another with the Saints getting the best of the Islanders both times. 2-1 on the eighth, as you mentioned, a comeback victory for the Saints and a 4-0 victory here at home. And they had a nice little run. They 4-0 victory and a 5-1 victory. Back-to-back -back hat tricks by the strikers, P. and Coney and Curry Rueda. Yeah, that, those were tremendous uh, games. Back-to-back, uh, back-to-back. Uh, -back, back -back, one, one here at uh, Saint Augustine High School, and the other one in a road game at Scripps Ranch. It really, with the defense of the Saints, you put up a crooked number, and you have as good as a chance as any to pull out the win. Ooh. A, a tough, tough challenge from behind. Play on, says the referee. From his point of view, he was right there. I I'm guessing he thought that enough ball was was caught by the defender, but he ran right through Diaz Caballos. Yeah, good aggressive tackle, and as Bo said, it was uh, called legal. Rizalowski hands it off to Fusan inside the six, strikes it. And a nice save by the goalie. And smartly kicked out of there by Nicholas Woods out of play. So a good job by Irvin and closing down the angle. Best opportunity for the Saints. They're still in the attacking half. Pianconi got knocked off the ball. He was looking for Fusan near side. Padilla a little out of position. Can he get back? We've seen here early on, uh, Bo... Islanders coming out a little bit more aggressive than we've seen in, in the first two contests. And uh, that's going to be interesting to see. You're, they're playing out of their element right now. They're not a physical team. They like to use their finesse and their athleticism and their agility around the net to score goals. So now they're getting a little aggressive. We'll see how that plays, uh, if, if they, they're playing out of their element, if they can actually uh, c can compete. And Sahih Curry rather will play it quickly to Fusan near side. He'll center it. Can he find anyone? Rizalowski, 50-50 ball. And the referee says it will be a goal kick. So as you, as you mentioned, partner, aggressive play on both sides. It's playoffs. <laughs> it, it's a different beast. It adds an interesting dynamic. You lose and go home. You win and move on here in the open division. Talking to Coach Johnson before the game and. He mentioned he doesn't remember the last time all five teams in the Western League made playoffs, or at least in the open division. P. and Coney had a great opportunity right there, just a bad touch with the knee. He was one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, but that one rolled easily to Irvin. Yeah, Irvin came out aggressively, and if you're going to come out that far, make sure you come up with the ball, and that's what Irvin did right there. Nice outlet pass to Fusan, chips it here near side to P. and Coney. Brings it down nicely. He's one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. The strike. And great job by Irvin near post. Knocks it out, and it will be the first corner kick for the Saints. Yeah, I don't know if, if he actually um, touched that ball, Irvin, but he made a nice effort if he did. I don't know if it went off of him or off the post. I'm not quite sure off it, that shot. It went off the goalie uh, mm -hmm. because of the corner kick. It, it it looked like it, it was it was heading towards the net. It was a good strike by P. and Coney, but once again, Irvin cut down the angle. The corner kick on the ground, swing and a miss by P. and Coney. Yeah, Woods blocked that. Nicely done. Fusan, far post. Saheed Curry Reda had an opportunity with the header, just unable to hit it cleanly. He was by himself. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you think he might have jumped too early? It looked like he might have jumped us a little too early. It on looked that like his attack. timing was a little off right, right there. I would agree with you. We got a substitution here. Uh, Boaz, uh, Michael Patterson comes in. We know what he's good at. <laughs> if you've been watching any Saints games here recently, Patterson brought up from JV. This is his specialty, the throw-in in the attacking third yep. coming up on the 10th minute here in this playoff game. 
And hopefully we'll have another chance to talk to Coach Johnson because that's one thing I want to ask him is I've never seen a throw in with the caliber of this young man. And a point-blank miss rises above the crossbar. Coney with another opportunity. He's had multiple opportunities here today. Eventually he'll finish. Yeah, the throw-in was perfect. Both teams battled for the ball. It came loose to Coney, And as Bo mentioned, he kind of just kind of Kind of kicked it too hard and went completely off of his foot and over the crease. When the ball is trickling around the six, you have very little time. So I think he was trying to kick mm -hmm. it before the ball got down. It was at its apex. Tough to get on top of it, but a great opportunity once again for the Saints. Pianconi once again has an opportunity. He'll strike with the left, unable to get around. And the Saints applying a lot of pressure here within the last couple minutes. On offense. Yeah, P and Coney played it beautifully around Aiden Morrison of Coronado to kind of get that advantage. And he's done a nice job here early on putting pressure on the keeper. Diaz Caballos back in for the Saints. This will be the Saints' second corner kick. You know, it's nice to have opportunities, but eventually you have to capitalize. And the Saints hope to do that here. Yeah, the, the, the one positive, though, is a lot of play has been in on Coronado's side of the field. Caballos, De Apollo on the front post run, didn't get there in time. Gallego fakes, chips it in, nobody there. That back line of the Coronado Islanders pushed up, and so did the strikers of the Saints not be off sides. The long kick from end to end. And that one kicked out of bounds. Good defense by Johnston right there and allowing the Saints to get back on defense. Yeah, it would have been a good opportunity for Coronado, but it just didn't have the numbers. Right. And Even if he would have brought that one down, yeah. he would have really had to hold position right there. Let's see what the Islanders have in their attacking third. The long throw in. Nice front post throw. The flick off the post. Good whistle. Wow, dangerous. That one hit the inside of the post and ricocheted out a centimeter one way or the other, and it would have been across that goal line. So the Saints very fortunate right there. On that front post run, you're just looking for a flick with the head, and a little, little fortunate for the Saints right there. Yeah, well set up by Coronado. Just could not capitalize. Give credit for Saints that kind of getting back and also a little luck with the post. <laughs> it's always good to have a little luck on your <laughs> yes, side. Yes, <laughs> especially in playoffs. <laughs> good job by P and Coney near side. Controlled it nicely. Almost split two defenders, but it was knocked off of, of a Islander defender. Once again, Michael Patterson in. No, it's interesting, Bo. Neither one of these teams look like they're rattled by, by this the playoffs starting right now they're both in tune and they're playing very well to start out great throw headed by De Apollo, deflected by the Islanders yeah great kick out there by number 10 that's Brandon Elisad for Coronado he clears it all the way out on the far side it'll be a throw in for St. Augustine De Apollo got a clean hit off the header but the Islanders right there to defend Headed forward by the Saints. Controlled far side by Diaz Caballos. Taken away by the Islanders. DePaulo keeps it in play. And it will be Saints ball once again. Like the pre excuse me, like you like the pressure that the Saints uh, are putting here. They've been doing it for the majority here of the first half. And uh, on the other side, Coronado, they they have they have been, but they have not broken. Patterson, long throw in inside the 18. DePaulo flicks it on. Pianconi with the finish in the back of the net. And unfortunately, it will be taken away by the offsides. Yeah, too tough break there for Saints. I thought it was well executed. DePaulo did a nice job setting up Pianconi as he kind of brought that second defender towards him. They allow the one-on-one the -on -one opportunity for Pianconi as he beat Irvin to the net. But as Bo mentioned, offside was called on Saints. No goal.
Near side, Rizalowski. Patterson tries to flick forward. Yeah, we definitely didn't have the angle, so there, we obviously the line judge had the best angle at the bottom. We and I'm sure, partner, you were looking at DePaulo with the <laughs> header as well. Exactly. But a great heads-up play in Pian Coney, realizing that DePaulo was looking for an option, and that's where Pian Coney is at his best inside the six. The long throw in, the bicycle kick set up perfectly. If Rizalowski could have got a hold of that one, that would have been an exceptional goal. And he's another one of those players, uh, Rizalowski, that we, we talk about that's kind of come on from the beginning to here we are in uh, playoff time. Rizalowski, the transfer, started with the Saints, then went to IMG Academy, then came back to St. Augustine. So he knows his program well, worked himself in nicely. Patterson still in here, gets the ball near side from Padilla. Does a good job knocking it off of the Islander defender with not much space. Yeah, smart play there by Michael Patterson. He was called up from JV on, on Scripture Ranch when they had that road game just about a week and a half ago. Saheed undercuts Woods, the captain. Excuse me, that's Cox. Calvin Cox, number nine. Woods is eight, who's also a captain here for the Islanders. DePaulo heads it towards the top of the 18. A miss hit by the Saints defenders. Valley comes off his line. Unable to bring it in. Padilla finds Sahi Curry Reda. Drops it back to Patterson. He holds. Tries to find Saheed. Unable to. Padilla a little out of position. He'll kick that one high near midfield. Headed down by Muddy. DePaulo controls far side. Almost got the ball to Pianconi, but good defense by the Islanders. This is Luna on the run near side, but Padilla knocks it out. Nice aggressive play by Luna. Or excuse me, nice aggressive play by Padilla knocking that one out, not allowing Luna to get to the ball. Yeah, Luna had had the step advantage. Padilla massively got his foot in there and, and knocked the ball away to the the, the force to throw in. Luna will come off the pitch to get a breather. And that that play is now more impressive, the fact that the Saints got the ball back. Yeah, he obviously must have deflected it off of Luna's foot. So good play, heads up play. But that's to be expected from Badia. He's been doing that all season long. Flick forward by Pian Coney. Knocked high towards Valley. And he'll bring that one in cleanly. Coming up on the halfway mark here in the first half. Score remains nil-nil. Both teams with a couple opportunities. Saints with, with a few more opportunities. They've been on the uh, attacking half in the latter part of this first half. And the Islanders with an opportunity in their attacking third. Yeah, one of the few times uh, Coronado is going to get actually a throw in on... St. Augustine's side of the pitch. The Islanders bringing in a lot of fresh bodies. It's, it's definitely one thing I've noticed as this game's gone along. Well, I think when, when, when you kind of switch up and try to play a more physical type of game and your players are, are not conducive to, to that style, I, I think they're going to wear out faster. So you, you better be on that, on, that, on that type of rotation. The long throw in, nobody on the other end. It was a great throw in inside the six. Nicholas Woods with that throw in, uh, Bo. Sahi Curry Reda has some space. A bad touch, though. This is Padilla. Controls. Kicks it forward to Rizalowski, who moves it to Fuson. He'll look for a Padilla near side. Gets by one defender. Plays it back to Tamer, who finds Padilla. Flicks it forward, trying, trying to find Sahi Curry Reda. And knocked out of bounds by the Islanders. So good ball movement right there by the Saints. Created another great opportunity in the attacking third. Yeah, almost like situational offense right there for St. Augustine. Kind of play, 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 and then when you see the opening, go right for it. Once again, Patterson back in, replacing Diaz Caballos.
All Saints players on the back post. Someone will look for a front post run. A little over Diopolo's head. Yeah, good kick out there by uh, Woods again. Tamer gets back in time. Knocks it back to Valley who will clear it out nicely. Gets it away from danger. Boy, would Valley's ability to the open kick, you almost feel like some high school teams might be like, have you ever thought about punting in football? <laughs> <laughs> he has a leg on him. Very impressive. And that almost becomes a weapon because you can clear it out and they almost start up. Ooh! Valley almost misplayed that one. We were down on the surface. It's a hard-playing yeah. surface very fast. Fortunately for Valley, he's he's seen one too many of those bounce just like that with the top spin. Played that one nicely. Beat initially, but recovered greatly. The long pitch inside the box. Sahi Kurireda gets the advantage. Flicked on. Miss hit. And another opportunity by the Saints inside the six. Patterson ah. once again cleared over the crossbar. Yeah, just a little bit more time. I think uh, he kind of gets himself underneath that ball. He has a he has a goal right there. He'll come off the pitch right now. Replaced by Diaz Calabros. So multiple opportunities inside the six. Unable to convert. The one they did convert on was they were called offsides. So the Saints applying the pressure here, just unable to break that nil-nil tie. Just crossed the 22nd minute here in the open division, San Diego section playoffs here at San Augustine High School, the home of the Western League champs in both basketball and soccer which has a nice ring to it if you're a Saints fan. Most definitely. Pianconi's looking for somebody. Defended by Woods. Drops it off to Fusan. He'll play back and got clipped by Woods. Yeah, because I think the cleat kind of hit his... Uh, That's hit. never fun. <laughs> no, not at all. It's never a good feeling, but it does slow down play. This is a dangerous spot. Just outside, outside the 18. We'll call it about 25 yards out. Padilla will take the free kick. He'll play it right towards the goalie, Irvin. A little too much pace. Didn't allow any runners to get there in time. Yep, you're exactly right. Easy play for Irvin to make. This one deflected off a tamer. But a great job by Padilla in getting back, clearing it from danger. Rizalowski, can he get there? Yes, he does. Plays it back nicely. Diaz Caballos tries to get by a Coronado defender. Great job by Rodriguez. Yeah, Rene Rodriguez right there with the clear out. Late whistle there. Turnover on possession. Now in the 24th minute. Coronado trying to break through. Trying to get something going here. The momentum has been all Saints here. In the last 10, 15 minutes of this first half. Pianconi unable to control it. Woods near side pushes forward. Fusan does a great job in getting back into that play. Knocking it away from Woods. Pianconi finds Diaz Caballos far side. Can he get by Rodriguez? He does initially. Gets knocked down. No call. And comes back into the play. <laughs> Wanted the call, obviously, after getting knocked to the ground. Usually when you beat that defender initially, get knocked to the ground, you figure you get the call. A little frustrated right there, as you could imagine. And he was like, uh, you want to know how it feels to fall down? <laughs> I'll show you how it is. 
<laughs> this is Halal. He'll play it towards the top of the 18. Flicked forward. Fuzan heads it towards Rizalowski, who chips it in high. Misplayed by Cox. Controlled near midfield by Muddy. Taken back by the Saints. Rizalowski, the transfer. Does a great job in closing in on Rodriguez, who knocks it off for Rizalowski. Back to the Islanders. Yeah, it's still a smart play by uh, Rodriguez there. He, he saw that, that the, the angle was getting cut off on him, so he just took it upon himself to kick it out of play and uh, give, him, give his team a, a better chance. And actually, I think they actually kicked it off of one of the Saints players. So they're going to throw it in the Islanders. So nice play all around. You like the aggressiveness of the of the Saints and also the smartness of Coronado. Coming in for the first time today, the sophomore, Moises Bayless for the Saints. Flicked forward towards Fusan. He'll do a good job and play it back nicely to Padilla. It's been a great combination for the Saints. Padilla beats two defenders. Finds Sahid Curry Rueda, who tries to drop it back to Pianconi a little bit behind him. Bayless loses the ball to Muddy. Muddy plays it forward to Sanchez. Sanchez far side. He'll keep the ball at his feet. Two Saints defenders come over to guard Sanchez. And knocked off a of Bayless will go to the Islanders. 13 minutes remaining in this first half. Score remains 0 0 here at San Augustine High School in San Diego, California. A couple of changes for Coronado. Coming off the pitch is Colton Muddy. Placing him is number 18. That's Aiden Morrison. Coming back into the contest. And we'll try to catch that other player that came on the pitch. Long throw and once again front post. Headed out by DePaulo. Struck by the Islanders from outside the 18. Defended nicely by the Saints. The Saints are definitely not going to give up any easy goals. Nicely chested down by Sahid Curry Reda who controls it. Gets it to Fusan near side. Nice move, Fusan. And the forearm <laughs> by Calvin Cox. I don't know if you could hear the audio very well, but the fans wanting the foul. Cox definitely had the advantage, but threw the arm up in the chest of Fusan, who beat initially two defenders, unable to get by Cox, who has a little smirk on his face. Looked like he, he knew he got away with one right there. Yeah, Fusan's not shy about getting a little physical with somebody. <laughs> and you can see Coach Johnson right here talking to the official. Wondering where that call was. Yeah, I don't think he was asking him, what are you doing after the game tonight? <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> no. <laughs> no freebies here today. Islanders will gain possession here in their attacking half. Nick Woods, the captain, with the throw in. Perfect opportunity coming to the 10 minute mark here in the first half to get something going for a Coronado fan. Chested down nicely. Plays it back to Woods. Tries to get back Fuson. He does. Gets past Padilla. Gallego on the run to defend. Plays front post, and Valley brings it in cleanly. Well, if he centers that just a little bit more, it was a tough angle. That was You nailed it right there, though. He played it too far towards the line. It was yeah. a very tough angle to play it back. You know, he, has a, he has an incoming uh, teammate coming in. He could head that in for a possible goal. Good play there by the Islanders. Give it credit there to number nine, and that's Calvin Cox. Fusong gets the ball here near side. Plays it back to Johnston. Play it far side to Diaz. Caballos on the run. Great job by Diego Mendoza 
clearing it out. And another throw in for the Saints. I don't want to correct myself. That was Marcer Marcerio Luna there, number seven, that made that play in the far on that shot attempt. Fusan has been covering a lot of ground here in this first half, so he'll get a well-deserved breather. Michael Patterson, the special T. We need to come up with a name for him. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to do that at halftime. The special throw-in, the flamethrower, the, <laughs> the shot put. I'll stop trying. <laughs> the opportunity. Once again, Diaz Caballos this time inside the 18 clears the crossbar. Once again, Bo, it's another opportunity where the ball kind of deflected out to, towards him. And instead of kind of taking your time, he kind of quick kicked it and went over the crease. DePaulo will come off the pitch. DePaulo, such great versatility, has played in the front and in the back. But because they haven't really found that left back that has fit in nicely due to the versatility mm -hmm. of DePaulo, they need him on the pitch, no matter how you slice or dice it. So that's where he's fit in nicely. Coming on for him is Jack Shea. Yeah, and I think eventually, Bo, I think Jack Shea will be that player for, for St. Augustine. It's it just right now he's not, he's not where, where, where he, he needs to be to be out there. For uh, for as many minutes as like Apollo is, just because of his ex lack uh, lack of varsity experience. Right. The high bounce near the 18. Islanders unable to clear it cleanly. Gain control. Nick Woods over to Muddy. Muddy will play it outside to Sanchez. Make that Lopez. Lopez can't get by Diaz Caballos. Great body by Diaz Caballos and not letting him get by him. Francois Ikeoke is in the game now. Seeing him on the pitch. We've seen him multiple times in the latter part of first halves <laughs> with some exceptional goals and really carry that momentum into the half. He'll hope to do that this time around in the first round of the Open Division. Yeah, you read my mind. I was just thinking that. This is this perfect opportunity to kind of make an impact in the game. And as, as, uh, as Bo mentioned, and one other thing is he's fresh and he, know, he somehow knows how to, to kind of situate himself around a tiring defense to get a good, get a good look at the at the crease. The Saints have definitely applied the pressure here in the first half on that back line of the Islanders. Because of it, they're giving P and Coney some good rest. This is the freshman Santiago Gallego plays it over to Diaz Caballos, who has some move moving forward, and a clip from behind. No call once again. We still have an, an injured Islander player on the pitch. No whistle yet. There it goes. That's Colton Muddy, number two. Man, that is surprising. Diaz Caballos on the run. Mm -hmm. The defender from behind, Max Lopez, nowhere near the ball, trips up Caballos, and no call. That would have been a great area for the Saints to have a free kick. But nonetheless, an injured player for the Islanders. Looks like number two, Colton Muddy. Yeah, he was holding his back, but I was I was watching him as you were calling the uh, the play, and as, uh, he he kind of held his back there right. Did near you the, see? Did you see the? I, I don't think anything happened to him. I mean, nothing that that I saw. I I just saw the part where I saw him holding the, the like the lower part of his back and kind of falling to his uh, falling to his knees. So I don't know if it's uh, if it's stiffness or. if some incidental contact as they were as play was moving forward. Uh, uh, nothing that I uh, haven't seen an official talk to uh, to a Saints player about the possible infraction. So I just think it was kind of maybe his his back kind of tightened up on him here because as as we were, as we're watching him on they're treating him on the sidelines. They're not letting him sit down right yet. I don't know if that's for the back, or they're just talking to him, but we'll try to keep an eye on that for you. This one flick forward, Fusan! 
gets to it first, and Irvin is injured during the play. Make and a yellow pulled by Ikiosi. Ikiosi came in there. I don't obviously the the contact with him. I thought the contact initially was from the Fusong kick. Mm -hmm. Ikiose will come off the pitch after the yellow card is drawn. Wouldn't put it past anybody to act it out on a player maybe you want off the pitch because he's came off the bench. <laughs> Looks a little, little more quick and uh, active than you would like. Coming in for Ikiose after the yellow is Chris Erpelding, the senior. Irvin still down. Training staff still out there. Athletic trainer Ariel Luna for the Islanders out attending to Irvin. Who's done, really has kept this game 0-0 due to his exceptional play in front of the net. While they're talking, uh, while they're helping out the trainer, I see the head official both talking to Coach Johnson of St. Augustine, I think explaining him why he uh, gave uh, Ikiose the, the card there. I saw him motioning to his foot. So it's always good to get the explanation there so, you know, you don't kind of avoid any, any type of, uh, you know, you know, conflict with coaches. It's easier to talk it out. This is a good moment to do it. And you could see him motioning with the <laughs> forearm as well. As you remember, in, play you, you remember that one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, coaches never forget. No. It's, it's their job to bring up those situations just, oh. just in case. Tough break here, Bowie. It looks like Irvin's coming off the pitch. Kike Leon. And for the Islanders to play in front of the net. See if they could take advantage of the, of the replacement. I think Irvin will be okay. He's holding the back of his head. So I'm, I'm and, you know, not that there's mm -hmm. never a good time for an injury to happen, but to happen right before half, I think uh, Coach Brooks would, would uh, be pleased to have him rest through the halftime, I'm sure Irvin will be back out in the second half. And also in this day and age, let's not kid ourselves, he could also be being checked out for a concussion as well. That's actually a good point. And so, you know, it's just it's a part of our lives nowadays in in uh, in sports, as uh, and it should be, quite frankly. We're inside two minutes remaining here in this first half. 0-0 score here at St. Augustine High School. Chipped forward nicely. Fusan on the run. Fusan gets it here near side. Plays it back to Padilla. Padilla back to Fusan. Fusan can't get by Woods. Saints keep the ball. Near side. He'll center it towards the goalie. Unable <laughs> to bring it in cleanly. And that's something you want to do if the Saints test the goalie early and that one slipped right through Kike Leon's hands. Yep, pepper him a bit, see how he is. Not much, you know, he, he after the pregame warm-up, he's been sitting on that bench for, for close to 40 minutes. And that was a good opportunity there by Saints. And a missed kick by Leon. Rolls out of bounds near the 50. Padilla will throw it in from midfield. Flicked on by Erpelding. Headed forward by the Saints. Stays in the air after five headers. No real threat on either side. Flicked forward, but the offside's flag will rise. And Saints with the ball. Looks like Valley now will take the free kick, Bo. I'm 
I'm sure a couple minutes will be added on due to injury with a couple injuries taking place. I think Valley chips in towards the top of the 18. Fusan near side. Cuts back. Plays it back to Padilla. Off the Islander defender. Yeah, smart play there by Saints. Want to get that throw in immediately. Here comes Patterson. Like to get that one more opportunity here to get a Get that scoring opportunity before the end of the first half. Apollo comes in as he will replace number nine, or excuse me, number 19, and that's uh, Jose Diaz Calabros. Long thrown by Patterson towards the top of the six, headed forward towards the goal and just wide. And not much on the shot attempt, but I liked it. Be aggressive, especially with this goal, goalkeeper who is uh, just come on the pitch right now. That might end this first half of action. We'll see off the goal kick. Ball bounces near the 50, headed forward by Fusan. Erp Helding. Back to DePaulo. Gets by the first defender. Can't get by the second. Cox cleared it out. Fusan to Menace. Menace plays it back to Fusan. The slide tackle. Fusan keeps control near side. Gets by the first defender. Unable to get by the second. Keeps control. Gets by Woods again. Shot on goal wide. And great work by Jacob Fusan, I believe, will create an opportunity just outside the box. Yeah, you're exactly right. The head official said uh, the ball went off of a Coronado player, so it will still stay down here for St. Augustine. Got to hurry, though. Chested off an Islander defender. Fusan with the center near post. Leon does a great job in coming off his line and taking that one cleanly. Yeah, jumped right in front of two would-be St. Augustine strikers right there. So once again, another opportunity for the Saints, unable to convert here in the first half. Kick forward by Tamer. Controlled by Woods. Near side, Luna. Luna plays it back and then kicks it forward. This is DePaulo near midfield. He pushes forward. Luna unable to get it cleanly. Gets by Luna. Far side to Gallego to Menace. He'll center it. DePaulo flicks it back to Gallego. This is Fusan. Gets by the one defender. Almost gets by the second defender. Knocked out of bounds. And Patterson on the run as the head official looks at his watch. We don't have the official time. But I'm guessing this will be the last opportunity here in the first half. Yeah, I think you're right. This will be the the long throw on top of the six and headed wide by Shea. And that will end the first half of action here at St. Augustine High School as the score remains 0-0 here in the Open Division first round. And we'll be back with second half action here on the NFHS Network powered by SoCal Productions.
Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Coaches teach your kids to dream. Coaches teach your kids to overcome. Coaches teach your kids good sportsmanship. Coaches teach your kids proper technique. But who teaches your coaches? part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. After more than 50 years of innovation, AstroTurf still leads the way. The inventor of artificial turf does it all, right here in the USA. We engineer, test, manufacture, and install the world's most innovative fibers and turf technologies with over 30,000 tracks and fields worldwide. AstroTurf, powered by Sport Group. Lucia has a U.S. registered vehicle and is ready to drive to Mexico. However, before going on her trip, she went to www.mexinsurance.com and got vehicle insurance quickly and efficiently. Now she can drive knowing that she has a guardian angel to help her. This is Tony. Tony has traveled without car insurance, suffered a minor accident, and is now riding home on a donkey. Hasta la vista, baby. www.mexinsurance.com Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. 
They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Coaches teach your kids to dream. Coaches teach your kids to overcome. Coaches teach your kids good sportsmanship. Coaches teach your kids proper technique. But who teaches your coaches? part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. After more than 50 years of innovation, AstroTurf still leads the way. The inventor of artificial turf does it all, right here in the USA. We engineer, test, manufacture, and install the world's most innovative fibers and turf technologies with over 30,000 tracks and fields worldwide. AstroTurf, powered by Sport Group. Lucia has a U.S. registered vehicle and is ready to drive to Mexico. However, before going on her trip, she went to www.mexinsurance.com and got vehicle insurance quickly and efficiently. Now she can drive knowing that she has a guardian angel to help her. This is Tony. Tony has traveled without car insurance, suffered a minor accident, and is now riding home on a donkey. Hasta la vista, baby. www.mexinsurance.com Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life.
Back here at second half action here on the NFHS Network, powered by SoCal Sports Production. Thomas Conroy, along with Bo Furtick. We are at scoreless battle here between Coronado and St. Augustine here. First round of the CIF San Diego section soccer championships. And Bo, like, we, like you were mentioning in that first half, pretty exciting action here. And both teams look rather calm here for, for a playoff game. You know, it's definitely, I would say, a win for the Islanders mm -hmm. in that first half. Having played more defense and offense, mm -hmm. the Saints were on the attack really for that latter half of the first half, probably for the last 20, 25 minutes, unable to convert. So the, the Islanders have to feel really good right now knowing that they could have been down easily one, two, two goals. The fact that it's still 0-0, zero, zero, that has to bode well for them. But if you're the Saints confidence i mean the fact that you are getting those opportunities don't change up anything there's no reason to you've already beat this team twice let's just keep going out and doing what we do and uh, eventually one has to find the back of the net injury update Irvin is still out for coronado and that's a huge hit and Lo luna is uh, on the pitch right now looks a little bit more so i'm uh, kind of warming up so uh, that was predetermined uh, before he came out on the pitch so he looks like he's ready to go and I think you hit the nail on the head in that the concussion. You know, mm -hmm. it, he walked off fine, but he was holding the back of his head. And maybe a decade ago, he might be in this second half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but with all the co concussion protocol, it's um, it's a big deal now, as it should be. And because of it, uh, Leon, Kike Leon, in front of the net for the Islanders. And here we go with the second half action kick by Santa Gusta on the far side to get things going. Islanders now trying to get something here on in the far side. Good uh, good lead pass, a little bit too far for Elisad. The only uh, there's two new two fresh bodies for the Saints on the pitch. That's number three, Jack Shea, and number eleven, who we don't mention a lot, Alejandro Penanuri on for the Saints. Quick throw in. Good to see those guys on the pitch. Gets himself some playoff action. Here comes St. Town coming in. Low shot by Piaconi. Mm. Just wide on the far post. Wow. Piaconi with another great opportunity. He's just finding his way on the other side of that back line. The Saints been doing a great job in finding an open Piaconi. And uh, multiple opportunities for Piaconi just wide on that shot. Tough angle by Piaconi right there. The fact that it was just outside that the edge of the box uh very difficult tried to curl that one back in just unable to another poor free kick by luna of coronado and he's gonna throw that it in could, quickly. that could play a, 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 an effect here as his game goes moves forward nicely played defensively by coronado that elias halal and now he's kind of gimpy don't know exactly what happened. Did he step on a divot? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I think when he went up, he came down awkwardly. Okay. Didn't see that. Yeah, I mean, this is this is about as nice as a surface as you can play on at the high school level. Never yeah. It's going to be nevertheless. Saints going to throw it in. Good throw in by Patterson on the far side. Broken up by the Islanders, and that will roll out of play. Still stay down here as Jacob Fusan chases after the ball. Nice crowd here on the campus of St. Augustine. People all over the sidelines here. Want to catch a glimpse of this game. As Fusan going to throw it in. Or excuse me, Passon throws it in. There goes a header attempt. And it go in and in. Jack Shea. Jack Shea with the header. Number three. And he is celebrating on the far side of the field. And more importantly, Saints up 1-0. The Saintsman, the senior, coming in for Henry DePaulo, replacing him here in the second half, and he gets the early goal. Boy, Bill, that was a great throw in by Patterson. We've it? seen it so many times throughout this season. And how great for Shea, mm -hmm. having started at the beginning of the season, then just getting replaced by DePaulo for obvious reasons. And coming in as the senior, being able to contribute in the playoffs, huge, that bodes very well right now for this St. Augustine team. 
You can see the fire in their eyes now off the, re the, re the start by the Islanders. Saints trying to forward it ahead. Islanders trying to get something going offensively. They send it back to their back line who tries to kick it forward. Both teams train possessions at the midfield mark. Saints now have it. Pass trying it on the far side. Broken up by the Coronado. Taken away by Saints. Put back in by Coronado. So again the exchange. As that ball goes out of play. And that will be St. Augustine's possession. And just to add on to that. The fact that DePaulo is still on the bench. Just keeping his legs fresh. Towards the latter half of this second half. Proves very, very good things. Moving forward here for the Saintsmen. We'll have to throw in a little physical play there. Saints have the ball. Trying to get something going here offensively. Coronado thought they had something broken up there by Johnson. And here on the near side, Shea trying to advance it. He does. To Diaz Calabros. Couldn't get anything on it. Reverse back. And now we're going to get a whistle. Nathan Sanchez on the far side. Injury on the far side. We, When he had control of the ball, looked like he got clipped from behind, fell down awkwardly. Obviously, our, our eyes were moving with the ball, so we didn't, we didn't catch the full detail of it all. He'll get up, but it looks like he's coming up limping. Yeah, it looks like he's getting better as the, the farther, the closer he gets to the sideline. Still kind of limping a bit, as Bo mentioned. But he'll come off the pitch, the uh, come off the pitch, the sophomore will. And it'll be a free kick opportunity for Mark, Mark, excuse me, Nate Valley, the goalkeeper for St. Augustine. Good free kick. Both teams contest. P and Coney gets it for St. Augustine, trying to lead it ahead. Broken up there and out of play. Nicely done there by number 20, Halal again. For Coronado. And Patterson. Another opportunity for the Saints. <laughs> this is uh, very similar to the great similar position on the field. Now I assume you get an assist for a throw in off of a header. I know you you do when, when you send a pass with your foot. But I mean it's the same thing. I would think. We'll check on that. Comes another throw in. Beautiful front rim, front post kicked away by Coronado. Shea was right there to get to put a foot on it. Foot from the outside goes uh, blocked by Coronado. They're trying to clear it out and kept in by St. Augustine. That last shot was by Penuri. Alejandro Penuri, their number 11. Here comes Coronado. Uh, misplay. Saints might have numbers. Curiretta trying to get ahead to Piaconi was not there. And they'll clear it out. So a weird little start here for Coronado. Not exactly the way you would want to want to get going here in the second half. But I think they're kind of thrown off by that goal by, uh, by St. Augustine. Yeah, the fact that they were chasing most of that first half and the Saints get the first goal on the board, they're going to really have to battle back. To, to get back into this one because at this point it's all Saintsmen. Penuri now trying to get, advance it ahead. Coronado now coming offensively. Far side. One man to beat. Great job by Padilla right there. Not yeah. giving up any ground. Yeah, Nathan Muddy, the senior, tried to get around him and could not. Muddy had Padilla initially, but the recovery by Padilla so strong in that back half. Not allowing any easy pass. But the Islanders will get a corner kick. Elisad with the short play. Sends it now in the middle. Broken up by Curry Ruder. Going to go all the way out near midfield. Islanders trying to keep it in. Little lob pass. Played nicely there by Valley. Curry Ruder, offensively or defensively, he just always has a knack for that ball. He just finds a way to, to get his head on it. Oh, a missed play there by the Islanders. They regroup and... Attempt to move it out to midfield. Saints so keeping the pressure on. And here comes Coronado. Now looks like they got a little bit of advantage. Trying to get a lead here on the far side. 
And Padilla. So strong. So Make, strong, Padilla, to win that ball back. Makes another play. Unbelievable. Coronado now will throw it in. A few players getting, uh, looks like Calvin Cox will, th will throw it in. And it looks like we're going to get a substitution, Bo. Diaz Calabros will come in. Jacob Fusan will take a respite. Fusan has done a great job today. He's covered a lot of ground. Multiple, has created multiple opportunities offensively for St. Augustine. Throw in by Coronado. Broken up there by the Saints. And Curry Ruder now has an advantage. Going to work his way into the middle of the field. One player to beat. Now passes it off far side to Pinuri. Pinuri trying to catch up with the ball, mm. but cannot keep it in. Great job by Coronado in getting back on defense right there. Saints had some open space to work with. And just a great job in getting back in time. Throw in. Saints trying to advance it. Coronado now has control. Trying to get it ahead. That is Morrison for Coronado on the far side. They're trying to work their way in the middle of the pitch. Nice mm. lead pass. Luna can't get it. Good ball movement right there by Coronado on the offensive possession. That's probably one of the better possessions that we've seen here today in this game just unable to complete that last pass to Luna it was there but just unable to complete now we have some fresh legs coming onto the pitch yeah, substitutions for St. Augustine David Rizalowski comes in and number 16 Moses Bayless comes in as well for St. Augustine Coronado Trying to advance it, but Padilla breaks it up. Far side, both teams contesting. Islanders trying to advance it. Can't go too far. So kind of trading possessions here. And now the Islanders send a long pass caught on the fly by Valley. Bayless getting some good minutes here in playoffs as a sophomore. There's a few sophomores on the pitch for the Saints, along with a freshman. Great move by Shea right there. Yeah, great footwork by Shea. He's going to try to get it ahead. Back in the middle, Curry Ruder fell down. Shea trying to help out, and that ball goes out of play. Still be St. Augustine's as they're going to throw it in. Shea will. DePaulo comes off, or DePaulo comes on the pitch as... Gallego, the freshman, comes off the pitch. They'll keep Jack Shea in. You score a goal like that, you definitely have momentum working <laughs> for you. And Coach Johnson loves the fact that he could play DePaulo anywhere as DePaulo will play more of attacking mindset here with Shea in. A lot of pushing and shoving as that ball goes towards the Coronado net. Islanders going to clear it out and woo, almost comes right into your living room. <laughs> That ball was coming right towards our camera. There'll be a throw in for St. Augustine. 27-48 remaining in the contest. Saints lead it 1-0 on the goal by Jack Shea. Off the throw in by Michael Patterson. And Patterson throws it in again. Ball gets bopped around. Luna comes out of the crease. He has it. And he's going to try to kick it. Now, he does a good kick here on the far side. Hit one of his better ones of the game. But the ball misplayed by Coronado. Frontman and Apollo now has it for St. Augustine. He gets knocked down from behind. No late, call. Late tackle. <laughs> and there, that guy just got sandwiched there by Badia and Apollo. Coronado still has it. Far side, trying to get around. Broken up there by the Saints. Good help defense right there by Rizalowski. Padilla was out of position. Rizalowski did a good job in filling in that space for the Saints. We'll get a throw in here. Yeah. 
Saints would like to add one more goal here. See if they could defend. Throw in by Cox, a Coronado header attempt to the go by, it does! Just out of the reach of Valley off the header attempt. And just like that, we're tied at one. The equalizer, Elias Halal, flicked it on. It, it's one of those situations where his back is turned towards the goal. He's just looking to flick it on, see if he could find an opponent, find a teammate. But beats Valley, crosses his face, and equalizes 1-1. Yeah, the only thing I could say, Valley maybe kind of made one step in instead of kind of gliding out towards that far side. And then that was just, the, just that one step. Not that ball to go by him. So we're tied at one. Both teams now playing aggressive. There goes a shot at oh! oh man, on the on the on the advantage, Moses Bellis with the score. Wow. What a response by St. Augustine. That's exactly what you want to see if you're Coach Johnston. Let's see how our team responds after the equalizer. And we saw multiple opportunities in that first half. St. Augustine had chances, point blank range, cleared the crossbar. This time, Bayless, you could just tell in his approach to that ball, he was going to knock it in the net. Great job right there by the Saints. Yeah, and boy, if we're crying out, you're like, what happened to our defense <laughs> right there? And Sahih Kurireda on the assist, allow allowing Bayless to have an opportunity in the top of the six. Great job in bringing it towards the middle of the goal. So 2 1, St. Augustine answers the, with a goal right back, right off the free kick from midfield after the Coronado goal. So we, they regain the lead, and Coronado now will get a free kick from, from the far side. Coach Johnson has been such a great communicator throughout this whole season, and in speaking with him during games and post games, He's always mentioned the third goal, how effective the third goal is, how important it is. And more often than not, in all of his experience, the third goal is usually the deciding factor. We'll see how that plays forward with 24 minutes remaining in the second half. Halal almost had his second goal. The header attempt went over the crease. Valley free kits it, goes out of play. And now Coronado will throw it back in. Saints trying to play it. Luna getting aggressive, and there goes a clear out by St. Augustine. Here we go on the near side, coming in. Shot attempt. Luna will come mm. out and make the save. That was more of a pass, just a little miss hit by Bayless. I would like to see them hold on to the ball, control that possession, allowing players to get closer to the net. He had some open room, open space. He tried to attack it. You can't fault that, but uh, a better pass would have created a better opportunity for St. Augustine. St. Augustine with the throw in now. They lead it 2-1. DiPaolo trying to get an advance at the head. And I'm going to say that ball went out off of St. Augustine throw in for Coronado. For a free kick. And this is a similar position once again right here. And off the free kick. Good one. Valley comes out. We'll let it, let it skip by and go past the goal line. Out of play with 22-38 remaining in this contest. We'll get a free kick by Nate Valley. And he's got to be breathing a big sigh of relief uh -huh. that his uh, his team got him back after that tough goal he just gave up to Coronado. Luna attacking. There goes St. Augustine trying to get a lead ahead. Pianconi got two men to beat. He does. Coming in with a kick. Oh. Shot just wide. A lot of pushing and shoving, but no call there. Yeah, Pianconi had the advantage. In that situation, you just want to toe poke it, try to f just pick one side. He picked the right side, just a little too wide. But I, I, where I think where you're going with that was, was those two center backs were.
pushing and shoving, which kind of uh, didn't allow P and Coney to get an easy look at the net. Shot it off balance. Both teams training possessions at midfield. Coronado trying to advance it forward. Push off and we get a whistle. Number 19 will get the push off. That's Renee Rodriguez. He had a good first half defensively. And that time he gets an infraction. That happens. As we get the free kick in. And low kick. Luna coming out of his uh, net and makes the play. Steps right in front of Curie Ruta there to make the save. And here comes another poor kick attempt. And that ball will go out of play. That should be St. Augustine. It is. And Leon doing a great job coming off his line right there. That's a tough ball catching it in traffic. He brought it in cleanly. Well played by Leon. But Bo Leon, he's got to kick better here to the near side. Then. He seems more confident kicking it to the far side of the field. I would agree with you on that. Here comes St. Augustine now trying to get something going. DePaulo behind his back with his own pass. So we're going to get a whistle. And nice. They're going to call it on, uh, on Halal now, I believe. Yeah, I would definitely say moving forward, he's going to kick it to his strong side. Uh, for some reason, he just he's, he's missed hitting Leon is coming to the near side. Calabros now with the free kick. Kicking it to mm. that far post, but That's it not does not work. hook as it stays straight and it goes out of play. Just crossed the halfway point. Three goals in the first 20 minutes of the second half after having no goals in that first half. Here comes uh, Coronado now trying to lead it ahead. They got, a, they got Luna just a little bit ahead of the play. Couldn't get it to him as the ball goes out. Yeah, great job by the defense of St. Augustine. Oh, wow, and they're giving a goal kick to the Saints. That ball was played forward by Muddy. Tried to find Luna, who had some space on the run. Knocked out of bounds by St. Augustine. But they, get, they catch a break right there. Referee puts his hands up to the corner out of the bench. He said, that's enough. Off the free kick again. A little pushing and shoving. Ooh, Coronado. that's a dangerous. That guy flew to the knee of the head of St. Augustine. No call. Rodriguez trying to clear it on the outside. Kept in by the Saints. They're trying to get ahead to Rudy Crute. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity. <laughs> Curry Ruda, but oh, it was not there. Foul. And there goes another push off. Looks like from behind. I don't, th this game as it's gone on, it's, it's getting chippier and chippier, more aggressive, and I don't see it letting up anytime soon. Yeah, that infraction on Aiden Morrison. Here comes DePaulo, his shot attempt, picked up by Leon. Nice attempt. He's just looking for a flick from one of the strikers to try to misdirect it, uh, but it goes straight to Leon. Free kick. Shea heads it forward. Broken up by Coronado. They're trying to get a lead. The Luna here on the near side, and it goes out of play. Get a whistle here. And we're going to... Fusan will come on for Curry Reda, who's covered a lot of space here in this second half. Fusan with fresh legs. He'll play more towards uh, the, uh, the attacking mid. He'll play higher on the pitch. Off the throw in, here come the Saints on the far side, trying to get something going offensively. As Bo mentioned, they love to get that third goal right here. Give themselves a two-goal advantage. Nicely tackled there by Rodriguez. He pushes a couple of players off the ball. Now re-stolen by Saints, and Islanders trying to clear it out. They advance it just a little bit ahead of themselves, broken up there by DePaulo. Nice play on number 11. Nathan Muddy. We got the throw in. Luna number seven got pushed from behind. Yeah, Shea started the second half, got that first goal. He's staying on the pitch, which is giving good minutes for Henry DePaulo as more of an attacking mid, which he started the season with. Calvin Cox looks like he's going to run in to throw the ball in, and he does. Good one. Luna trying to get a header, loose ball, Ooh. picked up by Valley. 
Good job by Valley. Aiden Morrison was on the back post waiting for that ball. If Valley wouldn't have got there, that would have been another equalizer for Coronado. Good outlet on the far side, taken down. They get the call, nice. St. Augustine player gets knocked down. And I believe that'll only be a throw in. I don't think that'll be a corner kick. No, it'll be a free kick. I can't tell who got fouled. Was that Diaz Caballos? I think it was on the far side. Did a great job holding the ball, keeping possession. The, the defenseman for the Islanders got a little frustrated and fouled Diaz Caballos. Another great opportunity for the Saints right here. Yeah, free kick just about five yards away from the corner kick area. Saints setting up on that far post. Now a couple of players drift off to the middle of it. Here comes the free kick opportunity. Header mm. goes over the crease. Good look at it. Just could not hit it. That was Jack Shea again. Yeah, Shea, similar to what Sahi Kurireda did in that first half, just jumped a little bit too early. On those, you got to get on top of the ball and head it straight down. When you mistime the jump, it's tough to hang in the air. And when you're, when you're coming down and the ball's moving up, it's very difficult to hit. Here come the Saints again offensively, broken up by Coronado. Shea keeps it in. Nice give and go. Trying a nice lead pass. Too far for number 16, and that was Moses Bayless. Bayless, who has the big goal of the game, is the second goal of the contest, his first of the playoffs. And now Coronado will pick it up and throw it in. 14.46 ago in the contest. Here comes the throw in. Advanced by Shea. Both teams. Pianconi has it. He's getting pushed. He'll send it back outside. Apollo back to Pianconi. He's kind of set up players using hand motion. Nice lead pass to Apollo who takes a mm. shot attempt. And Leon cut the angle off and played it nicely. And there he goes with the lead kick. Mm, another. I think that ball was partially deflected by St. Augustine. Is that what the official is saying? I don't know. That's a good question. It wasn't intentionally blocked, but it looked well, like he just kind of walked into when he was free kicking it out of the, yeah, I don't, the zone. I saw a St. Augustine player jump into Lyon on the kick, so I think that's what the infraction was. Nevertheless, the Islanders have it down one here in the near side, trying to send it a good lead pass too far as that's picked up by Valley. Nathan Sanchez was on the run, tried to get on the other side of that pass, just a little too much pace. Good to see Sanchez back on the pitch. He was injured in the first half. Coronado does lose his possession on the far side. It's been that type of afternoon for them. Padilla will throw it in. And both teams, once again, trading possessions. Apollo mm -hmm. hits the player from behind. So that will give it the ball to Coronado. Free kick. Lead ahead, nobody's there. Padilla's gonna let it roll to his keeper. Nate Valley who picks it up and now he'll outlet it on a throw here on the near side. Bayless trying to lead it ahead and good lead pass. He has Pianconi if he could get there. Oh, player got knocked down, no call. That was the most blatant knockdown of them all. Hollow that's kind of pushed off to the ground, number 16 for St. Augustine. But because Diaz Caballos had such a poor touch, the ball was nowhere near him. So the referee chose to play on. If Diaz Caballos would have kept that ball closer to him, he would have had an opportunity. By the time he was knocked down, the goalie already had it practically in his arms. It's just one of, the, it's one of those gray areas where they, they often let it go if the player's not in control of the ball. And with, with the poor touch by Diaz Caballos, they let it play on. Off the throw in Coronado on the far side. Trying to advance it, they do. And there goes a shot attempt, broken up by Shea. Valley's gonna have to pick it up himself, and he does. This Ooh. outlet pass has been effective. 
And there goes a kick ahead by Bayless. Blocked by Coronado. And we're going to get a couple of substitutions for St. Augustine. Now, I, I think you explained that perfectly, why that was a non-call there on the on the near side. Because it was obviously blatant. I mean, right. but with that being said, you know, the defender shouldn't have an opportunity to, to, to bully over mm -hmm. an attacking striker just because the ball is a little too far from him. And there goes a sliding tackle out of play. Ball go to Coronado. But I think we, we, can, we can safely say that these officials have let the defenders get a little bit more physical with the strikers in the offensive zone than we've seen in a regular season. Yeah, and I kind of like that, mm -hmm. I, especially in the playoff atmosphere. You know it's going to be a little bit chippy. There's more emotions involved with it, so I like the play on factor. Throw in, gets tipped around. A nice header attempt, but Valley makes an easy save as we approach the 10-minute mark in the contest. Saints holding a 2-1 lead off the free kick. See what they can do, but it's going to be offside, I believe, yep. In that situation, with time on their side, I would actually like to see Valley hold on to that ball a little bit more, allow the Saints to get closer to midfield. In that situation, all the Saints are just playing defense. They're playing back. They don't want to allow another goal. And because of it, I'd like to see Valley be a little bit more patient. Like right here, there's nobody in front. There's no one, no one near... Now there's two attackers near midfield, and he'll just drop it off. Yeah, gives it to Padilla, kicks it up on the far side. Good distance. Saints trying to capitalize on it. Coronado negating it. As they get the advantage on the far side, but too far. And that ball goes out of play. There's been a couple of Coronado players. We can't get the numbers because they're wearing some type of uh, covering. On, over, Ooh, over dangerous the, pass right here. Sorry about that, uh, Shea. We'll get back to that in a minute. Luna trying to get it ahead. And Shea will clear it out. Coronado trying to advance it. Luna wasn't ready for the pass, and that was easily played by St. Augustine. They're attacking Valley now, not letting him a free look. To clear it out, he does get it though. DePaulo working on position, trying to get the ball more importantly, but Coronado keeps the pressure going. Cox trying to get around a couple defenders, gets taken down Ooh, by, tough tackle. by Padilla. Padilla made it a good, clean tackle, and now we get on the give and go. Here comes Padilla now in the middle of the pitch, trying to advance it here on the near side to Diaz Calabros, broken up by Coronado. Bayless, no, no, that's Fusan, excuse me. On the far side, sends it in. Header attempt. Knocked down by Leon. Kicked again. Missed. <laughs> Ball ricocheted all the way out, almost in midfield. What action. Another great opportunity. Fusan playing it in front of the net. And here we go. Far side. One uh -oh. man to beat. Here they come. Coronado has it. San Augustine trying to get back. Sliding tackle gets taken down. They called it. And Inside the box or outside. It. That will be the question. Valley saying it's outside the box, but they're going to call it on number 15. That's Isaac Tamer. And we'll see what happens here. Nathan Sanchez <laughs> is the victim. It's a PK. It's a PK. Penalty kick. That will be done by Nathan Muddy. 7.38 to go, so penalty kick will be taken. We saw Nate Valley at Cathedral Catholic block this PK. We'll see what he can do here. I don't know what we're waiting for. I think the line judge and the head official are talking right now in the corner. And I believe they're discussing whether it's a penalty kick or whether the foul occurred outside the box. And I think he just, uh, Nate Valley's expression, I think he just got the ruling that it will be a penalty kick. So as we hit just under seven minutes, <laughs> here we go. Penalty kick time here. Nathan Muddy will take it for Coronado. Valley ready to go. Hits the top of the net. 
And now he's ready to go. He's expressing to 14 that this is my net. <laughs> we'll find out. Muddy calmly waiting. I think this is 14, Nathan Sanchez. Is Sanchez going to take it? Sanchez comes in. There goes a the kick, and he beats him to the far side. Yeah, and there's, there's no reason for Sanchez to have that ball. Usually you'll see once a team scores and they're down a goal with time expiring, they'll want to get that ball. But that, that was really unnecessary at that point. Nonetheless... Well, An another equalizer. You for know what, Bo? I, I, I think he, I think initially the way Valley played it, I think he thought he missed it. <laughs> hmm. Because it, it was weird because Valley, Valley went down and it, and it went in. And obviously, it went in, but the way it came ricocheting out, he I think Valley it looked it at might have been off the yeah. post. Yeah, because he was going one way and his back was turned towards mm -hmm. the goal. So on that penalty kick, we're tied at two with five and a half minutes to go. Wow. But you got to believe we're going to have some extra time here uh, for. Uh, yeah, on that on that opportunity, the Saints were just caught a little out of position right there. Here comes Coronado being aggressive again. That cost them the last time they tied the game. It will be a throw in for St. Augustine. And it's on the far side. Pianconi trying to get it now to Curie Ruda back in the contest. Fusan has it. He's nice trying move. to weave his way through a couple defenders. Broken up there by the Islanders. Nice play there by number 20, Elias Halal. And Patterson will come in. Nice move by Fusan on that far side. Here comes Patterson running in. He'll do the throw in. As uh, number 19 comes off the pitch. And that's Jose Diaz Calabros. Dan Gusson's going to all line up on the far post, but they, the last few times they kind of went in different directions towards the net. Leon looking at the alignment, now motioning to his defense where he wants them. There goes the throw in, header attempt off. Here comes another attempt by Santa Gusson, broken up by Coronado, and they clear it out. Nicely done. Saints trying to keep it at the, the attack. Lead pass ahead, broken up by Coronado. And oh, trying no. to get a lead play. Ooh, collision at midfield. Play on. And Coronado has it. Trying to get a lead in front, but that player is not there because he's still on the ground. <laughs> yeah. And there goes a kick attempt by the Ooh. Islanders. Just over the top of the crossbar. I think that is going to draw yellow, even though it was it continued play. Yeah, Nathan Muddy is the injured player. He's going to stay on the pitch. And that's unfortunate for the Saints as Isaac Tamer will come off the pitch as he draws the yellow. Yeah, Tamer comes off, but DePaulo comes on. And we're going to get a substitution for Coronado. Number three, Diego Mendoza comes off. And we'll try to get that player that just came on the pitch. His number, if he works with us. I think it's Nicholas Woods. We'll check on that. Off the free kick. Coronado trying to keep it forward. Both teams being the aggressor here. Offense came to play here in the second half. Two goals apiece for both teams. Shea with one of the goals. Sends it back to Valley as he was getting pressured by Woods. Valley forwards it ahead. A little too far, and that will be played by the keeper, Leon. You see how Leon is taking his time right here. He's not rushing it at all. It's, it's a better understanding of where we're at in the game right now. We're coming to the two-minute mark. Then the, the clock stops, and all the time will be by the lead official on the field. Valley comes out of the crease. He can't come out of that box, but he makes the play just on the edge of it. He's going to take a free kick opportunity here. It's a good high one. Powell tries to head it forward. Ball gets advanced in the middle. Islanders trying to keep it. Saints grab it. 
Far side, Padilla, oh, tried to make a play, lost it. Here comes Coronado from behind. Padilla takes him down, no penalty. Back to Zapala in the middle of the pitch. To the far side, Bianconi gets a pass, trying to work on one-on-one -on -one with Rodriguez, and he'll clear it out. And now we're going to get a whistle. Is it still muddy? Yeah, he's motioning towards money. He wants him off the pitch. Possibly for blood. Now the Coronado coaching staff coming out. Uh, Want to get a ruling. What's going on here? Fresh legs coming off for San Augustine. Diaz Caballos along with Rizalowski. Tamer's still on the sideline. I just don't know if that was a... Uh, an actual substitution or not. I think it was injury play. Nevertheless, we're going to get a throw in here by St. Augustine. Muddy came off the field fine. He, he doesn't look injured at all. So I, I think you were right in assessing that he might have been cut. Off the throw in. St. Augustine trying to gain some advantage. Here comes Coronado. Nicely held up there, and the Saints throw it ahead. Bianconi has an advantage, broken up there by Rod, uh, by Ellis, uh, Halal, excuse me, and that ball will go out of play. And uh, nevertheless, it was called offside. Good play by Halal, tracking back to get that ball. Bianconi had had he had the edge, but Halal did a great job right there in getting back and recovering. Checked on that offside. The ball went off of St. Augustine. Throw in by Coronado. Luna heads it down. Picked up by DePaulo. And he'll send it here on the near side to Shea. Shea looking for an opening. Gives it to DePaulo. Nice mm. give and go. Too far ahead. Broken up by Coronado. Yeah, DePaulo was wanting the give and go, but Shea wasn't there. Valley, beautiful kick ahead to DePaulo. Trying to get it to Pianconi. Picked up by DePaulo, but he's offside. I don't get how he was offside. If the ball was kicked off the defender forward, that only means DePaulo was on the right side of the defender. That absolutely makes no <laughs> sense. Absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. Looks like you're applying for a soccer's coaching job. <laughs> <laughs> off the free kick. And, and doesn't that make sense, though? <laughs> no, and, I agree. And if the ball's played forward, knocked off of you, mm -hmm. how... <laughs> <laughs> Are you offsides? I, I, I would love to hear that explanation. Here comes Coronado. Oh, nicely played on the pass by Shea. Stolen. Mm, Sends it ahead. Broken up by Coronado. And Valley will come out. That right side is open if he plays it quickly. Valley going to hold it. And we'll get the free kick. Trying to get it. Coronado heads it forward. Will be a throw in by Shea. Shea nicely advances it ahead. Pushed off a couple of <laughs> same players go out of play. And that was kick attempt by Coronado broken up there by St. Augustine. Nice play there by number 12. That's David Rizalowski. Yeah, that was well played right there by St. Augustine in the corner. Halal now will throw it in. DePaulo will play for St. Augustine. Trying to advance it ahead. Rizalowski trying to advance it to Piconi, uh, Pianconi, and it's broken up there. Far side, ball goes. Saints trying to gain possession. Both teams trading. Coronado trying to advance it. Shea won't let it. And then Curry Ruta comes back, and he tries to clear it out of the zone. Nice give and go. Pianconi and Fusan. It wasn't there. Here comes the lead on the near side. One player to beat, cannot get it done. Coronado has it. And they'll try to clear it. Saints have it, far side to Fusan. Nice ball by Gallego. Trying to go one-on-one -on, -one on the defender. Now gonna go long, off to the side. Gets around one player, broken up there. Now puts it up mm. high in the air. And picked up by Leon. And we get a whistle. Every time you hear a whistle, you think it's going to be the end of the time. And I have an injury. Oh, didn't even see that. <laughs> might be a, might be a cramp. That looks like a cramp right there. 
Looks like a cramp if I've ever seen one. <laughs> this is where he fell down. Yeah. Or now he's perfect. Or exhaustion. <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, we're gonna get a free kick here. And they're gonna have to substitute for the player. Wish he'd turn around and give us his number. Just trying to. I'm not gonna speculate. Nevertheless, he's off the pitch. And here comes a free kick by Leon for Coronado. Good one. Good distance. Saints advance it forward. Kept uh, by Coronado. Once again, Saints trying to get it ahead. Good play here. It's the two defenders. Leon comes out. Gets knocked down. Rizalowski there, a little aggressive, but I like it. He's with the two defenders, and now oh, we're getting. Oh wow! They're gonna, they're gonna call the foul on the two defenders from Coronado. It looked like Rizalowski got knocked into the goalie. I thought they might have called uh, that, but this is a great opportunity. Who's gonna take the kick? They had DePaulo and Padilla come together. I think Padilla won that. Won the verbal uh, battle. Now, Bo, this would be right outside the box, if I'm not mistaken, this uh, this free kick opportunity. Yeah, we're looking about 20 yards out right here. It's going to be taken by number nine. That's Padilla. Either Padilla or DePaulo. Uh, I either one the senior. Yeah, De DePaulo came over at the last minute. He might be taking it. No, De yeah, DePaulo kicks it off a couple defenders. There goes another mm -hmm. kick. Almost went through. Broken up by the Islanders as they try to send it out of play, and they do. Wow. And Padilla off the first kick went right off the Coronado wall right there, and then he put it right back in. Passon comes onto the field. He will throw it in. And he already has an assist on a, a goal by Shea off of a throw in. Let's see what he does here. Good, strong throw in. Broken up. Loose ball. Coronado trying to clear it out, and they do. Here comes a lead. Nicely played there by Badia. Broke, uh, cut off the lane. Oh, excuse me, Curry Ruta broke it up. He sends it to Badia on the far side. He takes a shot in. Coronado heads it and now kicks it out to midfield. Both teams contesting. Shea has it. He gives it here on the near side. Sent in, cleared out by Coronado. And Curry Ruta heads it ahead. Shea trying to lead it ahead. Gives it too far. Pianconi going to get muscled off the ball. And we're not going to get called for anything. Halal once again is the enforcer. <laughs> we were playing hockey. That's what they would call him, the enforcer. Whistles. I think we got one more opportunity for a chance to get a game-winning goal. Yeah, as the, the head referee looking at his watch. Yeah. Time is time is closing down quickly here in the second half. Coronado off the free kick. Both teams going to go forward. Here they come. St. Augustine on the near side. Luna coming back. Plays the trying to play the ball. Good move. Center in the middle and cleared out by Coronado, and that will do it. We're going to go to overtime, I believe. <laughs> now this is where we gotta we got to find out the rules of overtime. I want to say in high school it's two 15-minute halves, but we will check on that right now as both teams get breathers. And we'll take a quick breather because that was, uh, that was an, uh, about as exciting as the <laughs> second half as you can get. A lot of fun. Two goals for both teams. That's where we are right now. We played two halves. It is 2-2. We'll take a timeout here on the NFHS Network, powered by SoCal Sports Productions. Just a reminder, 
Kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Coaches teach your kids to dream. Coaches teach your kids to overcome. Coaches teach your kids good sportsmanship. Coaches teach your kids proper technique. But who teaches your coaches? Back here for overtime. We'll give you the rules of overtime in just a minute. But first, we want to say uh, thank you so much to our sponsors for today's playoff action. That is uh, Home and Away. And we also want to thank Shore Rider. San Diego Taxman is coming up April 15th. Go down there. Teague Insurance. And Thorn Street Brewery. We thank them all for being sponsors of Western League Soccer all season long. And they continue their great support in the playoff uh, season. So we appreciate them. We thank them. And we encourage you to go there and support them as well. Thomas Connery along with Bo Furtick. Bo Furtick just came back off the field. And he has the important news. <laughs> what are we going to do so here in overtime? It's one 15 minute overtime. And it's a golden goal. So that means the first team that scores wins. If nobody scores during that 15 minutes, then it'll go to penalty kicks, which I like. I, I think after playing nine or 80 minutes of soccer, well, you know, including uh, extra minutes, closer to 90 minutes. And then having to play another 30 minutes mm -hmm. uh, of classic goal, which I've seen done before. I like the 15-minute rule, especially with both teams scoring four goals in, you know, the, first, in, in the last 40 minutes. So I, I like the fact that it, it's a golden goal opportunity. First, first team that scores moves on. And uh, if not, they, they still have another playoff game after this, the, the winner. So you don't want to overexert. We, we saw a player at the end of that second half kind of follow the ground, do the – Overexertion, a little cramping had to do with that as well. So because of it, if, if nobody does score at the end of this 15-minute period, then it will go into penalty kicks, which I like. it. Penalty kicks in soccer is probably, out of all the sports, is one of the most exciting times other than, well, I, you used to be able to say the onside kick in football. That's kind of been taken <laughs> away through the rules. But, um, yeah, penalty kicks in soccer is probably one of the most exciting moments in any sporting event. Not that I want to see it get to that. I would like to see a deciding goal. Uh, but nonetheless, both of these teams have played so well. The fact that Coronado was outplayed in that first half, down one goal, then down another goal, and equalized both times, I mean, that's, just, that's a true testament of the Islanders. And the Saints, offensively, I mean, they, they've been a force to be reckoned with all, all game. Saints will be moving left to right on your monitor as we get this off. Coronado in the white will get the free kick and start here in overtime. Ball goes ahead and it goes too far. Valley cuts off the space there. As uh, that was number seven, 
Mar Mauricio Luna coming in for Coronado. So as Bo said, excuse me, 1450 to go. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I, I wanted to touch on Luna a little bit. He hasn't been necessarily effective with the ball, but getting back to the ball, he's definitely tracked some balls down as we get a handball right there. But multiple times, Saints had an opportunity moving forward, and Luna has gotten back in the play with his quickness and speed. So Luna has had a, a good effect on this game, even though he hasn't scored in a goal or an assist. Inadvertent handball by Coronado. That will give Saints a free kick opportunity. Yeah, we're about 30 yards out right here. It looks like Diaz Caballos standing over the ball. This is a tricky situation. You could either chip it in towards the six or just a strike on goal. He's going to go over the ball. Wow. It in. Off the free kick. What a strike by Diaz Caballos. Oh, my Lord. Jose Diaz Calabros off the free kick goes right over the wall and past Leon on that post for the goal. So initially it beat Leon off the post. But because Leon got over there, it bounced off the back of Leon into the back of the net. So unfortunate for Leon, but great placement, great strike right there by Diaz Caballos. At 13.58 in overtime, St. Augustine finds a way to win it. 3-2 to two over Coronado and will advance in the CIF section soccer championships in the open division. And so they'll head to the semifinals and they'll, they'll play Point Loma Canyon Crest. We don't have the, the result from that game. If Canyon Crest win, St. Augustine will head to Canyon Crest because Canyon Crest is the second seed. If Point Loma upsets Canyon Crest, we'll have another semifinal game here. And that will be decided I believe they next played week. It. So next Tuesday, next Tuesday, next gonna Tuesday will be week. the game. And then uh, we don't know exactly when Point Loma are, are they playing tonight. All all uh, open division first round games are be playing right now. Okay, so we so have, we'll we'll know. We 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 don't have an official score on that one. Yeah. We'll know uh, probably in about an hour or two. But uh, nonetheless, what what a great game by both teams. Coronado has to hold their heads high. I mean, to come back from down a goal and equalize twice in, in one half, so impressive. Coach Brooks and this squad battled back after losing to the Saints twice. They played them competitively here in this game. Either team could have won, but uh, the Saints were just a little bit better today. Yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to be a, a little bit lucky as... Calabros' shot attempt went right in just past Leon. Give Leon credit. He was not the starter in this contest. Irvin, uh, Jack Irvin was injured in the first half and did not return that play. He was uh, very formidable in the net uh, as, a, as a replacement. And uh, unfortunately, he gave up the last goal of the season for the Islanders. They're eliminated, and that will... Uh, Pretty much to do it here, Bo. Uh, anything else you want to add? Yeah, um, great game by Coronado. That they they have to hold their heads high, but St. Augustine was just overall a little bit better today with the ball, and uh, we're we're a little fortunate on, on a couple possessions. They had more opportunities, and they definitely deserve the win today. Western League champs move on to the semifinals, and no matter who they play, Point Loma or Cannon Crest, you can expect a great matchup. And to find out when the, that contest and where that contest will be, stay tuned and uh, look at the NFHSnetwork.com website because SoCal Sports Productions will be there to cover it. We just don't know if we're going to be here or up at Canyon Crest High School. So that will do it today for my partner, Bo Furtick, and our camera crew and everybody else here on the NFHS Network. Yeah, we thank you so much for tuning in. Again, the final in overtime, 3-2. to two, St. Augustine moves on in the San Diego section open division. Have a good night, everybody.